Today we're going to be doing a quick unboxing video of the brand new MG300 multi effects. Stay tuned. <laughs> Hey, thank you for joining us for another episode of Addicted to Gear. So one of the most common requests I get through viewer mail, viewer comments, is Tony, can you please do more unboxing videos? I don't really understand what the big draw is for unboxing videos myself. I don't, I'm not a big fan, but if that floats your boat, I'm happy to oblige. So Chuck, my mailman, just dropped off this package. This is the new X MG300, and basically that stands for Modeling Guitar Processor. It's brand new, I haven't had the chance to play it yet, and I figured I'd do an unboxing video for you guys since you love it so much. By the way, I'm not really sure if the mailman's name is Chuck, but that's what I call him. So without further ado, let's open up this bad boy and see what there is to see inside the package. So of course, safety is number one priority. You want to make sure that when you're using any kind of box cutters, you keep your fingers out of the way. Otherwise, you're going to have to be playing guitar like that, which is, well, I could give you some inspiration, but I don't think it's going to be that exciting long term. What do you think? Anyway, uh, let's open up the box here and see what there is to see. Now, this uh, unit has been out for quite a while. I've been trying to get my hands on one so I can do a review for you guys. And uh, it finally came in, so I'm super happy. Um, the unit itself is quite small. If I can just get it out of the box, you'll see what I mean. I mean, the box itself is quite small, so I'm pretty sure the unit will be even smaller. There we go. So here's the initial box. So we have the Nuex MG300 owner manual, just a few pages. Oh, we even have a nice little sticker. I love stickers. Going to put that on my guitar toolbox. Um, so the, f the actual manuals, only a few pages. It's in uh, Chinese and English and whatnot. So we'll save that for later. Um, of course, we have the box on the right hand side. This box is pr pretty much, um, I'm pretty sure all it is, is the power supply, right? Yeah, so there we have a standard power supply. We have a regular L-type plug. Power supply is not extremely large, so that's good. Keep that there. Protective packaging looks pretty good. So let's get the box out of here, make some room. And open up the units. Sealed nicely. All right, so there we have the initial view of the unit. Mm. My first concern, Mayday, Mayday, is that the box enclosure seems to be made of plastic. Uh, yeah, it is plastic. The bottom isn't. And the top is. So that's a little concerning for me, uh, just in terms of long-term durability. Uh, the actual screen that you can see here is not extremely large, quite small. Uh, we'll plug it in. We'll see what it looks like when it's actually powered up. Nice grip here. Nice rubbery thick grip for the, uh, the pedal, which is nice to see. And the pedal itself is quite large in terms of length. It's actually the entire length of the unit, which is pretty nice. Um, compared to some other ones that, I've ha that I have, they try and reduce the size of the pedal, and that makes it a little bit awkward to use, so I'm not really a big fan of that. I really do enjoy a nice, big, wide, thick pedal, although everything's made of plastic, so I'm a little concerned about that. Uh, it would have been nice to see a, an actual metal compartment there, but... Now, the knobs have a nice feel to them. The select knob has resistance to it, which is good. They're kind of like mini MXR knobs, and I like the fact that the knobs are white, uh, so you can see them clearly in the dark. The other knobs, the gain level and master knob, kind of are a little bit less resistance. But this is like a, the select knob, you can actually hear the click when you turn them. So that's cool. 
the loop and the drum switch feel okay. Uh, I like the rubbery feel of the other selection buttons that you have up here. They kind of feel grippy, so that's pretty nice. Let's plug in the unit quickly with the plug and see what it looks like with the menu turned on. Because since it's so small, I'm just curious to see if the menu would be hard to read. So let's just do that really quick. Of course, they put they wrap everything up so well that it's a little bit difficult. The actual length of the cable, just so you know, looks to be about three or four feet long. So long enough to give you a bit of room to maneuver. That's always nice. Okay, so the unit is plugged in. As you can see, the screen here, although it's small, the indicator light for the patch, they're using some big fonts there so you can see the different switching options and what patch you're on. So that's not too bad. If I go into the edit mode, the screen is full color. Uh, if I go into the edit mode and just go through some of the options, you can see how the screen changes depending on what patch you're on. Uh, I don't know, I think it's pretty clear. I think you're able to make out what you're doing on the screen quite, uh, quite adequately. Not so bad. You have the tap function here that lights up and blinks. That's pretty nice. So I guess if you're in tap mode, you can tap it quicker and slower. And it'll tell you how quick the actual sequence for the tap is. That's nice to have. Uh, do the buttons light up here? It looks like there's like a, a plasticky little thing underneath the switch here, and I don't know if they're supposed to light up or not. Maybe when you're in a different mode. So this is the tuner mode, you can see that. I don't see the, the, uh, the, 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 any of the switches light up, however, so maybe that's just uh, my impression. I have to read the manual to see whether or not they should be lighting up or not. Okay, so one of the things that I noticed about the unit right off the bat is that uh, the input-output selection is quite limited. You only have one input, one output, so the input is for your guitar, the output is for headphones. You have an aux in, I'm assuming that is for like an MP3 player or something like that, an external source. And then you have a USB input there, and um, that's one of the strange things. Uh, there's a USB input, and I'm assuming that is to connect the unit to the interface, the software that you can get if you download off the website. However, it's not included. So that's a little bit, um, I don't know, a little cheap, I think. I think they could have at least included the USB cable with that since it's not a standard USB. It looks like it's a, a micro USB and not everybody has one of those laying around. So yeah. So overall, guys, my initial impressions right out of the box is that, yeah, the unit is quite compact. I like that. It's actually a lot smaller than uh, the Ampero, even the Ampero 1, as a matter of fact. Uh, the interface itself looks to be quite simple. There's only two selection buttons here. There's a couple of switches and, and, uh, and knobs, and there's not much else. The pedal seems to be nice it feels solid but it, everything else on the unit is pretty much made of plastic so i'm not sure how great the unit will stand up over time i'm hoping that it will however only time will tell there is only two switches so there's not a lot to go wrong it looks to me like there's lights here but i don't really know how that would work maybe when you're in looper mode so you can see that the lights do light up when you're in uh, loop mode, I guess it is. So you can select your drum track, uh, you can select your tempo, and then you're in loop mode. And I guess it flickers on and off when it gets to the end of the loop and starts over again, which it should be now. 
It's exactly what happened. So that's nice. That's a nice visual representation of what's going on with the unit. All right, so overall, uh, the lack of inputs and outputs has me a little bit concerned. Some other units that I've tried offer additional inputs and outputs, including balanced uh, inputs and outputs that, that you can use to go directly to a board. This one has basically the minimal amount of inputs, no power button. I don't know why they wouldn't just put a power button there. It's kind of ghetto to have to like unplug the unit every time you're finished with it. I like to keep my stuff plugged in and just reach for the power button so I don't have to, you know, bend down underneath my desk and search for the little plug in the dark. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this un quick unboxing video and my initial impressions on the Nuex MG300. Now the unit is interesting for sure, especially at this price point. There are a couple of red flags that I'm concerned about, but I'm going to reserve my overall judgment on the unit until I can put it through its full paces, play around with the menu and the software and the sounds. And then at that point, maybe those issues that I've mentioned in this video might not be so concerning for me if the sound blows me away. So stay tuned for the next video on the unit where I'm going to be doing that. We're going to be going uh, into the sounds, taking a deep, deeper dive into the editing software and basically looking at all the ins and outs that this unit has to offer. So if you like the content that we're producing here on Addicted to Gear, do yourself a favor, hit the subscribe button. If you're already subscribed to the channel, hit the little bell icon so you'll be notified whenever we post some new videos. We do that regularly, so please do yourself a favor. Don't miss out on any of the cool videos. Now, if you want to support our channel, you can do so by grabbing some swag down below. I often post discount codes Keep your eye open in the comments for those. You can save yourself some money while supporting the channel. That's it for now, guys. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Addicted to Gear. See you soon. In the meantime, stay tuned. Keep rocking. There'll be more great stuff coming your way.